Hello, hello. My name is Annie and today I'm doing my cash stuffing for the month of November. So today's cash stuffing is going to be a little bit different. I don't have the right denominations and I don't have enough prop money. So I'm just going to have to muddle my way through. Uh, I have a cheat sheet over here. So I've got $6,925 to stuff, which is a big amount, but... Um, I'm kind of finishing up my peak season of work. Uh, yeah, so we're just going to have to work our way through. Bear with me. I'm going to have to make a change as I go. So if you're new here, I use prop money uh, to represent money I keep in my bank account. I am a complete uh, digital cash stuffer, so I bucket my money already into my bank account and I have an offset account which is a home loan product which reduces the amount of interest owed on your home loan. So for every dollar you keep in your bank account you don't need to pay that interest. So I've got a Sydney sized mortgage um, so every dollar I can save yeah, that pays off my home faster is better for me. So first of all, we go to taxes and taxes is getting a whopper. It's getting $2,200 this month. So in taxes, I have 5,000, 6,000, 7,000, 500, 600, 700, 800. Oh, another thousand. Let's try that one again. 5,000, 6,000, 7,000, 8,000, 8,500, 6, 7, 8, 9, 9,000 dollars. And I'm going to swap this out. So 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 1,000. I should still have 9,000, so I have 9,000 dollars in taxes. I am self-employed. I run a small business and well, a few actually. So I do have some money that comes to me every month pre-tax and some money that is post-tax. And I already uh, take out my mortgage actually. So all you see me stuff is partial taxes and bills and fun. Superannuation. So this is extra for retirement. It's getting... $750. This is one way that you can reduce your taxable income. And it, in fact, it's probably the most tax efficient way of reducing taxable income because we only tax superannuation or retirement savings at 15%. So it obviously is an incentive by the government for you to sacrifice now. So it's called salary sacrifice if you do put extra contributions in from your income. So 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 3,500, 4,000, 4,250 and 4,500 dollars. So I'm going to keep this and 1,000. 1, 2, 3, $4,500 in super. And this money also sits in my offset account um, until close to the end of financial year. Um, and that's when I make my extra contribution. So again, trying to reduce the home loan. Bills and utilities gets its regular $500. So I have 1,500, 2,150, 17, 90, 95. So that's 2,195. Yep, bills. I have to up my contents insurance actually. So uh, I've recently plugged all my things into one of those um, insurance calculators and I am underinsured. Um, I live in an apartment so my building is covered, the outside of the building and the structure of the building is covered by my strata levies which pays for building insurance. Um, my building is insured for more than 200 million dollars so you know it's worth a lot. But inside the four walls, that's all on me. 
Um, I've only, only insured my belongings for $75,000, which is not enough. Um, since moving in, I've installed things like uh, curtains, roller blinds, fly screens. Um, yeah, and these are all really expensive things and furnishings. So, uh, yeah. Also, my kitchen is made out of marble. So the price of that at, you know, 2024 and 2025 replacement and rebuild prices is insane. So I really need to be upping my contents insurance to probably $100,000, $150,000. So I pay my insurance annually to get a discount, but oh, insurance is so expensive now, guys. So We'll have to see how much is in here. It's not due until May. So, yeah, 2195 I might consider just adding the extra money in when it comes. Anyway, council rates is getting $100. This bill should be due this month, actually. So, $100, $200, $300, $450. Strata Levy is getting $300. So like I said, Strata Levies pay for things like building insurance, which is the biggest cost. Um, you've got things like lift maintenance. I live in a high rise. We've got a pool. We've got a lot of common amenities. We have cleaners seven days a week we have an on-site full-time building manager you know these things cost money so um they make where i live very 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 nice but it costs money yeah so and everything's going up so 500 600 700 800 900 1150 70 80 so that's one thousand and one, two, three, four, five. Oh, oh, do I not have one thousand slips anymore? I'll just do two five hundreds. So one five hundred, one thousand, one hundred fifty, seventy, eighty. Yeah, so like I said, <laughs> I'm totally running low on prop notes. Medical will be getting $40. So I've got 500, 600, 20, 40, 50. And let me swap this out. $650. and fifty. Business will be getting $100. Got 100, 200, 300, and $5. That's in the wrong place. Savings gets its regular $500. So I've got $5,000, $6,000, $7,000, $7,000, $500, in the bank. And I have $500 in emergency cash and $15,000 in my emergency fund. Groceries is getting its regular $600. So this is groceries and eating out. Splurge is getting its regular $200. So I have 500, 600, 700, 800, 950, and $70. 970 bucks. I'm out to dinner tonight, so I'm gonna take it out of Splurge because it's a fancy event. Um, home and miscellaneous is getting $200. 
I have been on this crazy spring cleaning thing <laughs> and uh, organizing my home. So yeah, I've been spending a lot of money. Uh, storage containers, tubs and baskets. My gosh, they do add up. They're so expensive, but it's how you can or how I need to keep my place clutter free. So $100 to $250. Family is getting $100. 150, 70, 80, 180. Gifts and hosting is getting $100. Party season is coming up. 110, 15, 115. Um, yeah. An update on the gossip. If you caught my uh, October unstuffing, I talked about this uh, affair that was uncovered in my building inadvertently. Um, yeah, it, the plot has thickened. <laughs> it's, it's really just this ridiculous scandal right now. It's like a hush-hush thing that I'm now sharing on the internet. Um, yeah, so it started with oh, one of the grannies actually saying that one of the girls should date her neighbor. And I was like, oh, come on, you know, if it goes wrong, you literally have to live next door to them for like ever. Yeah, because no one is selling up here. No one is letting go of like a property worth 1.4 million here. <laughs> I was like, you're stuck. And that awkwardness will stay forever. Yeah, so um, the man in question is, yeah, he's single, yeah, he's divorced, whatever, he's got his kid on the weekend and yeah, blah, blah, blah. But the married woman in question uh, ev that everyone is side-eyeing, like applying severe, severe moral judgment to, um she's married and she's the owner of one of the penthouses here and she doesn't live here anymore um because you know her family are ultra 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 rich and like people have been who aren't in the on the loop of the affair because obviously you kind of have to be on the floor at the time to see people leaving and exiting and coming and going from apartments. Um, she's been getting on everyone's nerves because she parks her Ferrari in the driveway. <laughs> I, I know, rich people problems, right? But because she parks her Ferrari in the driveway, it takes up the little space that a lot of the Amazon drivers, like they stick their cars in to drop packages off. And we're like, lady, you've got like four car spaces here. Like just park in your car space underground. Um, yeah, so people are really annoyed at her in the group chat. We are all in this giant WhatsApp group, all the owners in the building. Um, yeah, and everyone's like, why can't she park her car in her drive, like in her car space? Like, and what kind of idiot leaves a Ferrari in the driveway? We're all like, yeah, well, when you're that rich, who cares, right? Plus, my building's car park is a what's what of crazy expensive cars. But that's a story for another time. But that's the juicy, juicy gossip because everyone knows that she no longer lives here permanently. She just comes in to check on her, you know, multi-million dollar property or something every now and then. But now everyone's getting suspicious. Like, why is she here? Yeah. And also, her apartment is in the other building to where this one is, to where the alleged, alleged affair is going on. But yeah, other people are starting to catch on. We're like, shameless, shameless, shameless. Yeah. And like I said, this isn't even the juiciest piece of gossip in my building. <laughs> I'm not even going to get into that. Uh, I have stories, guys. I have stories. Anyway, we're probably going to have to do wine night again to get caught up. <laughs> 
the buildings is is a what what of veritable gossip and the baby boomers are on holidays but they're like we want to be kept up on the gossip yeah and i was like you're on holidays we can't meet up she's like well i'm bringing my phone aren't i and i'm like nothing nothing goes by the old people in my building anyway i will keep you all updated overspending is getting 100 dollars um, and next month, or oh, for a time off, is getting a big one of $750. So I've got 1,000, 2,000, 2,500, uh, 3,000, 3,250, 3,500. Let me swap this out. I can't believe I'm out of thousands. Oh, so... 1,000, 2,000, 3,500. So this covers my mortgage um, when I don't work. Uh, so fun. <laughs> Speaking of mortgages, I've been doing my um, refinancing calculations. Uh, I've been saying, oh, I'll film a video. I will have to get around to this, but... Oh, the numbers are making me so depressed in Sydney. I only have a one-bedroom apartment, yeah? But property prices in Sydney have skyrocketed, skyrocketed. Um, and according to the banks that are willing to refinance me, so a couple of the big four, they've valued my tiny one-bedroom, one-bedroom apartment at more than $950,000. Um, yeah, that's insane. That is stupid money. Um, it's not worth that, I don't think, and it won't sell for anything close to that. But it doesn't matter what what price I can sell it for. I'm not going to sell this place. I'm going to have to borrow off the equity if I want to upgrade. Um, and... Honestly, I'd like a second bedroom just to use as a home office. That way, you know, I can just slink. Oops, I just knocked you. Sorry, that way I could just slink into the next room um, to work. <laughs> My dining table is a mess. Uh, but long story short, I can't afford it. Not right now. So I've done my numbers and... Right now, I have $347,000 of usable equity, which means like money I can re redraw out from my current home loan and current property equity price. Um, I am considering doing it. I really am because basically I could just pull out the $347,000, add it to my current mortgage and have that money sitting in my bank account offsetting the mortgage. But the problem is borrowing power is down, right? For every interest rate rise that went up, um, I lost about $50,000 of borrowing power. So I'm in that awkward space of I can afford, you know, significant money. You know, I'm on a decent wicket in Sydney. Um, but I can't afford to stay in my area. So I've done my stamp duty calculations. I will obviously have to pay stamp duty again if I buy a new place. Now, when I bought my place, I did already need to pay $20,000 of stamp duty. I received a $10,000 discount from the government as a first home buyer. But this time, obviously, you don't get it a second time. If I purchase property of $1 million, I'm looking at $39,529 of stamp duty. <laughs> That's tax straight to the government as soon as you purchase. Um, $1.1 million, it goes up to $44,000. $1.2 million is $48,529. So 
realistically, if I want to stay in my area, I need to come up with a bare minimum of purchase price of like 1.2 million, 1.24, 1.25 mil. Um, I can't afford that right now. I'm in that, mm, if I push and squeeze, I've got maybe, like, I've got one mil. I can buy for one mil. But it means I have to go somewhere else. Um, yeah, but I am just right now considering whether I want to pull that out right now. Like, one of the banks, one of the big four is, is just telling me, well, you can just pull that out, refinance with us, and have it sitting in your bank account for when you want to make a purchase. But uh, it means I have to redo the whole budget all over again with the new calculations of the mortgage. I'm still very much on the fence right now. I, I can have that pulled out, just ready to go. But I know that I don't want to buy for like 980,000, one mil, because it means, well, I have to look in a different area. Anyway, Sydney purchase prices, right? And I'm only talking about a two bedroom apartment in my area. Maybe I should throw myself at the Maserati dude. Joking, joking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> my building dating politics is <laughs> as you probably worked out, crazy. No one's stupid enough to date each other. Well, actually date each other, except for the alleged, alleged affair. <sighs> I'm like, you could just hide it a little bit better, all right? And, oh, I've got thousands in here. Buffer, I'll just use this. <sighs> Three thousand five hundred in next month. Let me move this somewhere else. And I needed to go back to uh, whatever, whatever. So that's bills and utilities and sinking funds done. Sorry, today's a bit of a mess. On to savings challenges. Now, new phone is gonna get $100. So new phone has 1,000, one, two, three, four, five, 1,500 in new phone. you know what, guys, I'm done. I'm done. I can't be bothered with this anymore. I just, I can't. This is dragging on forever and I'm not buying a new phone. So like, whatever. I'm going to put this money into my savings. I do not have the patience to do the savings challenges. I know, I know. I think I look at everyone else's videos and oh yeah, everyone's got cute savings challenges. And I'm like, oh, I want to do that too. But I do not have the patience. I don't. And quite frankly, because I'm a digital cash stuffer, like I need the numbers basically shown on the back in my trackers yeah, so that I can double check that I haven't screwed it up. Um, my current bank does not allow for multiple buckets on the offset account. So it just goes into one giant bank account, um, one offset. So whatever, I'm gonna put this into savings. So 1,500 into savings. So adding the new phone savings in, I've got 5,000, 6,000, 7,000, 8,000, 8,500, 9,000, 9,500. Let me swap that out too. Here you go. So five, six, seven, eight, nine thousand five hundred dollars in savings. So finally, finally, yeah. I'm not buying a new phone, like I said, and you know, if my phone carks out, I consider that an emergency, I'll just use savings or emergency money. Nine thousand five hundred done. 
yeah. Would I have liked the satisfaction of finishing this? Yes. Am I patient enough? No. And this can come out. Christmas. Uh, Christmas I'm adding 50 bucks to. So in Christmas I have 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 50, 600 dollars. I'm going to put all of that back and get 600. Um, I've already spent money out of this for Christmas. I've bought some Christmas gifts, but like I said in my October unstuffing, I just took that money out of splurge because again, it's so hard to keep track of these numbers in, um, just at a glance. Uh, sorry, savings challenges while I think they're cute and fun. Yeah, they just don't work for me. I need the numbers. 600. I will use uh, this money for food in December and uh, the rest of it I will dump back into my splurge account. So Lunar New Year, um, this is going to get $100. So now I have $100, $200, $300, $400 in Lunar New Year. So Chinese New Year is on January 29th, 2025. We obviously celebrate on New Year's Eve, <laughs> but I, I think it falls midweek. So everyone's got work. We might do it the weekend before. <laughs> we'll see. I think it's really hard to get everyone together. Never the Bride uh, is getting $100, so $100, $200, $300. I've been told that this wedding has been booked. So uh, I think we'll get details about it at dinner tonight. Um, now, the bank of mum and dad is bankrolling this, uh, this wedding. So I don't expect there to be major expenses. Uh, it will be held in Sydney, very, very swanky place, um, um, major, major hotel for the reception. It's been booked. Um, the banks, the respective banks of mum and dad, realistically, the banks of mums, because um, dads are like, what? I don't even know what's going on. The banks of mums uh, have put the deposit down and... Um, yeah, we'll see. We will see. But yeah, I do expect there to be some expenses and I probably will throw them a party. Um, you know, this is, I have two closest friends in life. Um, my high school best friend married in 2018 and I was her maid of honor. Um, they bankrolled it themselves. Uh, so I actually did not make a financial contribution to her. I actually, um, through one of my businesses, I uh, gifted her a pallet of wine. <laughs> um, so I took care of her alcohol expenses. Um, and uh, and uh, actually one of my suppliers was you know, he heard about it. So he actually sent me extra wine free because he was like, oh, this is fun. Um, yeah. So I was able to save her the alcohol costs for her entire wedding. I also catered her morning tea. So yeah. And she paid for um, bridesmaids dresses. So you know, that one back then was a bit more budget friendly. Even then, I think they still spent like $35,000. Um, this wedding, uh, again, I don't know how, how much, um, if anything at all, that will, the bridal party will be asked to contribute. And I suspect, honestly, nothing. Um, 
my friend, he's very much like, it's our thing, we should pay for it ourselves. Um, but, you know, I think, um, yeah, I think I will be gifting them a financial contribution of some sort or at least throwing the bucks. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I have like a year to save for this. Um, but I think, yeah, more details will come out around Christmas. Anyway, Never the Bride now has $300 and um, Birthday will be getting the last 35 So now in Birthday, I have 20, 40, 50, 60, 65. Ooh, that's nice. Um, 65. Let me condense that down to a 50. Sixty-five bucks in birthday, which is not for a long time away. Um, and I'm not a really big birthday person, so my friends just take me out to dinner, and I take my sibling out, and that's about it. But even then, I typically just use splurge money. Anyway, so that's been my cash stuffing of $6,925. A bit of a mess today. I didn't have the right denominations, but uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed that or that all made sense to you. Uh, yeah, I will continue updating you on the gossip. <laughs> I hope you've all been well and I'll catch you next time. Bye.